Blinding dust, a major problem at the Mabatu Sun 500. Champion Jeremy Davies struck by bad luck yet again as he's sidelined by bearing problems. Toyota continues its domination in the commercial vehicle category. Of the top 10 motorcycles, 5 are 200s. Hopkinson and Spencer finish superbly in their Class 7 VW. If there was a lap for me, I had no brakes, so I had to win, I think. Made me go much faster with no brakes. Maybe today it's possible I'll do it again. Like it. Um, today it's a long way. At least it does don't do that good. I'm only starting to run, really, there's only going to do it. I'm just going to try and stay there and see in the last maybe 100 places I can play this year. Third off the line sometimes could be a good place to be because you can just play the waiting game, you know? And that's basically what I'm going to do today. Starting two hours after the cars, the motorcyclists had their strategies all worked out. First off was Ireland blazing a trail of dust in his wake. For Andrews in second position, thick white dust would be a major deterrent in any overtaking manoeuvres. In these conditions, as Alfie Cox said earlier, the waiting game was all important. Waiting for someone ahead of you to make a mistake, have a puncture or wrong slot could be worth your while. Travelling as one, Dalton and his machine coursed a speedy but dusty path through the wastelands of the drought-ravaged Kalahari. Despite being on the smaller 200cc machine, Yuri Human was holding his position well and went on to take a third overall and first in class at the end of the day. Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne were still holding their lead in the Motortech race car. Their progress through the Baputatswana villages excitedly monitored by the local population. In their wake, Degener and Bell were still attempting to close that gap, but their smaller engine BP Chenoweth found it almost impossible. Herman Sulwald and Mossy Mostert were sitting in a healthy seventh position initially in the Sulwald Fairfoot race car, but mechanical problems retired them midway through the race. Although he was meant to start second, Walk had left only 19th after alternator problems delayed him. But tenacity and V8 power ruled, and it didn't take him long to ease his way through the ranks back to an eventual second position overall. Bad luck had plagued this team throughout the year, and despite a fourth in class on Friday, R.P. Reinecke and Lucas Dreyer battled throughout Saturday to maintain the pace in their Cecil Ford career. Some guys have all the luck. Craig Hopkinson and Martin Spencer had such a smooth run in their VW Beetle, they never got out of the car once. Veslau and Blunkner were running an experimental gearbox in their Astoria Bakery VW bread van, and so far, so good. Free State pair, Van Furen and Pelsa were having a trouble-free run, and despite pressure from the rear, would win class and category honours at the end of the day. SVM team Cliff Barker and Mike Redden were to perform as consistently as ever, and they would later cross the finish line seventh overall and first in class six. As for the locals, the bigger the dice, the better. In an area where drought has brought nothing but suffering this year, the light relief of an off-road race was exactly what was needed. Meanwhile, super tired Suzuki rider Willie Ireland was powering his way through the dusty countryside in his own spectacular style. No competitors close enough to threaten him. Behind him, Patrick Andrews was giving it his best shot on the Lesotho office equipment Kawasaki, but it wouldn't be enough. Chasing Andrews and looking for the slightest chance to overtake him was a determined Alfie Cox. In turn, hanging on the cable behind him was a flat-out Yuri Human, holding his lead among the 200 riders. Hilton Haywood had slipped down from 6th to 10th position, but was still 2nd in the 500 class on the cable lock KTM. 
Riding together for a while were Kevin Tebbett on the Sun City Suzuki, a previous winner of this event, and Kevin Fisher on the Rockwell KTM. Unfortunately, Fisher later retired. In the leading space frame, the going was still good as Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne had yet to cite any opposition to their Porsche engine car. At the service area, crews and spectators anxiously awaited their teams. Degener and Bell would be needing more than just the customary refuel. <laughs> Robbie Walk was going like a rocket, having made up tremendous time since his delayed start that morning. From a deceptively relaxed area, the pits are suddenly transformed into a hive of activity. And while off-road pits wouldn't exactly threaten Mansell and his boys, they're efficient enough in their own way. Many hands reportedly make light work, and if there's ever a case of too many cooks spoiling the broth, no one's telling. Out in the bush, Willie Island was still on his way to the refuel point, with both he and his super tire Suzuki taking strain in the dehydrating conditions. Cox had seen his chance and overtaken Andrews and was intent on making up as many seconds as he could on the leader. Yuri Human had also passed Andrews and the 200 rider was looking good at the stage. Andrews, who prefers the mountains of his home in Lesotho to the desert, later said his bike wasn't performing as it should be, but the two of them looked in excellent shape here. Teammate Brian Bontekuning had moved up from 14th overall to 5th position and was holding his own on his 200. Eric Dalton's 500cc machine must have felt incredibly heavy, but he was maintaining his 6th overall and 2nd in class. Mattel's Richard Manning had started 6th in class on the Winston Yamaha, but he'd worked his way up 3 places. Almost there, and leaders Schilling and Thorne weren't about to let anyone even get close to the Motortech race car. Degener and Bell were still hanging in there in the BP Chenoweth. All it takes is one puncture to help you lose about 10 minutes, and no doubt they were wishing one on the leaders. Meanwhile, Walk was on their tail, the super paved race coast sounding as good as new. He was eventually to come in second overall, but a penalty would drop him down to fifth place. Youngsters Craig Hopkinson and Martin Spencer drove a superb race to be classified third overall and first in Class 7 in their beetle. This is when disaster struck the Lesotho team of Wilfried Veslau and Dagmar Blankner when they had two punctures in a row. Botswana team Rashid Noble and Joe Arby drove the Abe's Mitsubishi Pajero home to a well-earned ninth overall and second in class. And away they go. Class 3's regular leaders are Donnie and Hallo van der Merwe in their pink Toyota Hilux and they won their class yet again taking an 11th overall as well. Winners of last season's Rookie of the Year award, Wade and Grant Perrins performed well in their HPI insert Sandmaster, taking the honours for Class 10. The home stretch, and by now Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne could almost taste that bubbly. For Thorne especially, taking the chequered flag would be one hell of a moment. In 12 years of racing, he's never once won a national event. After 508 kilometers, there can't be a more welcome sight than the finish, especially if you're the winner. That flag, the champagne, the victor's laurels, and a sense of achievement only racing teams could possibly describe. A special moment for Schilling's wife and daughter. Well, it just feels great. It just feels absolutely fantastic. 12 years, first national win.
So, uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm so happy. But you drove like a star. You got lost three times, but short distances. <laughs> and, uh, just take seconds. Very good. And a special moment, too, for the winning driver and his navigator. It wasn't long before the leading biker arrived, and as expected, a delighted but exhausted Willie Island took the honours on his super tyre Suzuki. I had a bit of a problem with the fuel, I kept on running out before I got to the first place. So I managed to just freewheeling there all the time, and all the time I had to look back because I had Alfie and Patrick and all of them on my back. And uh, so Alfie thought to end, I saw him again and then I started going again. For Ireland, a well-earned victory. For the rest, they had to be content with runner-up status.